Welcome to SysEng Quick. My name is John, and today I'll show you how to use Podman to run containers in WSL. Podman is a Docker alternative and has a drop in replacement CLI, making it easy to switch from Docker to Podman. Docker Desktop has great WSL integration, but it has to be started outside of WSL, which is irritating when you forget. Podman Desktop still installs a full virtual machine, and the integration features are severely lacking. Fortunately, we can avoid all the desktop varieties and just use Podman within WSL2 natively. I'm going to install Podman on Debian 12 running under WSL2. I've tested this process under Fedora 40, Ubuntu 2404, and Debian 12 but any distro that packages Podman version 4 or later should probably work. Let's get started. I've opened the Windows terminal to my new Debian 12 WSL2 installation. Let's make sure our package cache is up to date. I'm gonna run sudo apt update, and now we can install Podman. You can either install the Podman package or install podman-docker to get increased Docker compatibility. That's what I'll be doing. So let's do sudo apt install dash y podman dash docker. Let's see if podman is working. Let's do podman dash dash version. We've got podman 431. And then we can run something with podman run dash dash rm hello dash world. Okay, we get hello from docker. There is a warning, but we'll fix that in a little bit. Let's try out the Docker compatibility. Docker run dash dash rm hello dash world. And there you go, it's exactly the same thing. You can see it says emulate Docker CLI using Podman. So we don't get that when we run it with the Podman command specifically. But it's okay, it's just running the exact same command with this message out front. Let's fix that warning we got about root not being a shared mount. We could run sudo mount dash dash make our share slash, and that would fix it, but it's only temporary. Every time WSL restarts, you'll have to do this again. Let's fix it more permanently. To do that, we'll do sudo edit etsy wsl.com, and I want to add the following line. I want to do open square bracket boot close square bracket, and then command equals open quote mount dash dash make R shared slash. So now every time we boot up, it'll run this command. Go ahead and save that file. We'll go ahead and exit this. And now I want to stop our container. So let's do WSL T Debian. And then I'll restart my Debian. And let's try that podman command again. This time we don't get the error. I've opened up VS Code in WSL. Let's go ahead and make a dev container. I'm gonna open the command palette and look for dev container and say add dev container config files. Let's add it to the workspace. Let's search for a Python dev container. I'm gonna use 3.12 bookworm. I don't want any features. Okay, there we go. We've got all of our dev container features by default. I don't want to reopen this yet. Because we're using Podman, we don't want to use the non root user that this dev container uses by default. So let's uncomment this and put a comma after here. We'll hit save. And now I'll open the command palette and we'll do reopen in container. Let's go ahead and show the log. You can see it's downloading our dev container. And there we go, after a minute or so, our container is ready. If I go open a terminal, we are in the container and I am the root user. However, I'm not really, because if I touch some file that's owned by root, and then we go back to reopening the folder locally, you can see this file is owned by me. That's the great thing about Podman containers. Root inside your container 
in a rootless container is actually your user by default. If your distro has Podman version 5, such as Fedora 40, it might not like how WSL2 mounts cgroup version 2. We can fix this by adding a line to Etsy FS tab and restarting our container. Let's do sudo edit Etsy FS tab, and then I'm going to add the line cgroup2, and then a tab, slash sys FS cgroup, another tab, cgroup2, another tab, rw no suid, comma no dev, comma no exec, comma rel a time, comma ns delegate, another tab, zero space zero. Let's go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to exit this. We'll go back to our PowerShell. We'll go ahead and terminate Debian again. And now we'll start Debian once more. Now when I do mount and I grep for cgroup, you can see now that cgroup2 is also mounted on sysfs cgroup, in addition to sysfs cgroup unified, although this path is shadowed and you can't reach it anymore. This shouldn't cause any problems even if Podman isn't complaining, but I haven't tested this extensively, so your mileage may vary. And that's how you run Podman in WSL2 to run containers. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please go hit those like and subscribe buttons. Come back and see us next time. Thanks for watching.